Yes, ma'am. Have you spent all four years here? Yes, ma'am. I came from Walnut Hills and then I started and I'm here now. Yeah. And so were you born and raised in Cincinnati? Yep. Um, I went to Silverton Paideia, um, Walnut Hills, and now I'm a senior here. And so this is your town. Um, and to be a, such a leader here at the university, how important was that to when all these protests started to look at how the university is treating our black students? Um, so I think when you take these leadership positions here at UC, it is more so responsibility. Uh, you are taking the responsibility to speak on behalf of your community, your constituents in some cases. So when you speak about those people in positions of power who are responsible for making sure you are treated equally, treated fairly, it's important to hold them accountable. So I think making sure that those administrators are answering the demands of the students is pretty important. Do you feel, how do you feel now as a black man coming to school at UC and how do you feel um, support-wise from the university? I think Coming to the University of Cincinnati, you're not really aware of the, the culture or the climate, um, but fortunately you are given the resources to learn, especially regarding the community police relations. Um, as you continue to learn, it is important to make sure that you and your community is safe. So um, as far as administration, I hope that they can do more to include the black community um, as far as allocating resources or just investing in their overall welfare. But unfortunately, I cannot speak to how much they have truly invested in protecting the black community here at UC. You have this list of demands. Um, just name a couple of the most important ones to you right now. So the list of demands is a culmination of conversations from not only students, but professors and faculty here at UC. Uh, we've even had conversations with members of President Pinto's cabinet. So while some of them are more pertinent to students, a lot of them are like policy-based. So as far as how can we hold our professors accountable? We want to implement a metric of diversity and inclusion in all of their annual performance reviews. So every year they have to submit a review to whether that be their dean of the college or whatnot. And it says if they didn't meet this criteria or standard on the basis of the student, then they should face consequences essentially. Um, it's another demand that we have are continuations of the irate aids and SARS holding UCPD accountable. Um, one of them include amending the FOP contracts, which essentially state the terms that our UCPD officers are held to. Um, I know Governor DeWine spoke to like a licensing order as far as holding our officers accountable, and I think that something like that should be here at UC. I think there is an overall disconnect when you speak of the different initiatives, um, community policing initiatives that administration has tried to enact. Um, and when you consider that disconnect and how students feel, it's very unfortunate to say the least. Um, it's hard to put into words the things, the initiatives they've tried to enact um, without student input and kind of just without regard for any student's feelings. Um, so you had to be their police chief for the whole time of like holding the police accountable, right? There are mechanisms for doing that, but unfortunately they do need to be pushed at times. Um, but no, yes, there are people who need to hold them accountable. And you're one of those, right? I mean, you're one of the main ones that have been holding them accountable over the last four years. Uh, I, yeah, I've tried to be, um, and I was in my student government capacity. So I've worked with other directors of social justice. Her name is Nia Thomas. She's a part of the Resident Hall Association. Um, and then other leaders of the Black Roundtable have contributed to these conversations. But it has been a very collective effort um, because, again, at the end of the day, it's a community that's being affected. So. So we've had conversations with administrators prior to issuing some of the demands. And as a result, I think it might have been a little bit easier to get some responses. Um, we've had conversations, or since I've been dealing with UCPD for so long, I've had continual conversations, like regular conversations. So we've addressed some of the issues and the feasibility of them. Um, and then we have conversations that are coming up. But unfortunately, I think these conversations should be transparent um, since these will be affecting a majority of the student body. I think a lot of the students should be aware of these conversations. Yeah. Yeah, so again, I've been involved within student government for a lot of my time here at UC, and I know that there are directors and people who are passionate about these issues. And I know that a lot of their demands are focused on creating equity for the black community here at UC. So hopefully we can work collaboratively moving forward. Because you've had two groups now pushing for the university to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And so 
so far our only response from the university is we hear you we just and nothing else we've seen all but that's it what do you think about that is that disheartening it is disheartening. Um, I think that's kind of the bureaucracy that is, I don't know, administration or just like higher education. But I think at the end of the day, we are trying to do similar things. We do have similar goals. Um, so as long as something is accomplished, I don't want to say that's better than nothing, but. Do you want to talk to Pinto? Do you want to hear from him and, and, and hold these people accountable or just simply say, hey, can you work with us? So the demands that the Black Roundtable sent were to like a couple of administrators in a sense that they were intentional. Um, we sent them to the Director of Public Safety, Director Whalen. Um, these are in regards to the FOP contracts, holding those UCPD officers accountable. Um, we also sent them to the Vice Provost of Academic Affairs. So these are more related to like the curriculum based demands. So Mr. Pinto might be like a figurehead, but as far as actually making change on campus, I need to speak to the people who are responsible for implementing and enacting change. I personally, and again, these have been ongoing conversations that I personally have had, but as far as the student body at large, I don't feel as if they are aware of these conversations, and therefore I feel as if a large percentage of the student body might not feel as if they're being heard. Yeah. But you've talked to them and tried to figure out the way to go about getting changed. Oh yeah, see, because again, the conversations that have been had have been with the members of President Pinto's cabinet. So we've tried to see what is feasible on their end and what we want on our end. I think a lot of this is compromise, but as long as we continue to work together, then we can do something. Um, we need that collaborative, co collaborative component though. Oh, so the Black Round Table has been introduced throughout UC's history in various forms. Um, so like UBSA, it started as UBA and now, and then it was the UAO. Um, so it introduces itself in various forms and the Black Round Table is the most recent manifestation. And again, it's just a mechanism of communication between all the black based orgs on campus. So we can not only affect short change in like a social justice capacity, but just talk about issues pertinent to the black community here at UC and then at large. And then when would you say all the organizations came together for the first time this year? Was it after the protest began or before? Um, I would pr a little bit before, just because we were trying to be proactive about our welcome week situation, um, how we're going to engage like incoming freshmen. So it was a little bit early May, so prior to a lot of the big protests and demonstrations taking place. Um, but that wasn't to say that we weren't addressing social distance issues here on campus. Yes. So again, we are discussing a lot of like preliminary fundamental stuff as far as like how we'll be engaging with those freshmen. It's going to be mostly virtual. Um, our welcome week sessions are turned to like breakout sessions. Uh, we'll also be talking about how administration has developed on some of the demands. One of our demands was making sure that the chair or whoever will be taking up the Black Round Table and representing the Black Round Table in these conversations has a, a voice at the conversations that are taking place. So whether that be the president's cabinet or the community compliance council, which does a lot of po community policing and poli public safety issues. Um, so address a lot of those issues. They're typically an hour, but as we continue throughout the semester, those will be open to the public. And typically they are longer than just an hour, but that's to see, sure to come, yeah. How many Um, we had approximately 20 people, but some people were rec uh, rep uh, representing one or two organizations. So, like, so there's a lot of black organizations here. Oh yeah, there is diversity within the black community. I think people really don't understand how non-monolithic the black community is. Um, we have, there's been a sentiment expressed that UBSA, the United Black Student Association, isn't representative of all the cultures um, and all the ethnicities here at UC. We have UCASA, that's the University of Cincinnati African Student Association. And I mean, people have these heritages. Uh, I have Ghanaian, Nigerian friends. And I mean, like, it's appropriate to say that UBSA isn't super representative of you. So to have the black round table, to have that communication, I think it's important when we try to talk about like, collective empowerment. Now, since you've seen the protests come together and the community of Cincinnati as a whole come together to protest, do you feel more support than ever? Or is this just another fight that you just have had to deal with your whole life? So the fight is ongoing. It's a marathon, not a race, um, not a sprint. 
But now that these protests have garnered the attention of people in positions of power, I think that the pressure is on them. Um, I don't think they can escape with as much as they've gotten away with in the past, but I don't think the protests are the only answer, the only solution. Um, these protesters, these organizers are coming together to make actionable solutions. And I think if we have those people who say they want to fix these issues in those positions, then it's incumbent upon them to actually do it. Um, whether or not they do it, how we hold them accountable, those are questions I don't know if I have the answers to yeah, yet. How, how you're going to get them to listen and make change. When did you send them the listen demand? July 9th, I believe. Oh, no, yeah. And this is not the only two sets of demands. Like, I'm talking with coalitions within DAP, and they're issuing demands to their fashion faculty. Um, and so one uh, kind of initiative that's very preliminary on behalf of the Black Roundtable is to have these transparent conversations in the form of, like, university-wide town halls. The first one we had was with the IECE, I think that's the Inclusive Equity Community Engagement Office within our Cincinnati, or... College of Engineering um, and Applied Sciences. And that was mostly a listening session, so they had the deans come and listen to the students. But moving forward, we want these to be more organizational. So now that we're having these meetings with administrators, we can say, how do you hope to develop on these demands? And at these town halls, they'll be able to elaborate in a transparent capacity to the student body. This is what we are doing for you. as far as administrators or just yeah, students? Um, so a couple of people within the president's office, um, mostly the people responsible for equity and inclusion. Um, and then again, the curriculum. So how can we change the curriculum? Um, and then I think I have a meeting with UCB. I have a meeting with UCB like twice a month. So yeah. those conversations are ongoing. We tried to figure out how to change the FOP contract. Um, and he said he wasn't sure. So I had to go to general counsel request some information but I've been talking to general counsel all summer um, on like one of student government's demands is to get UCPD's budget I requested that maybe last month and I had an itemized list of what they spend money on so we can try to reallocate um, and I think that's one of the black round tables demands but that just shows that there's so many similarities and so many issues that we're working towards um, so if we can collaboratively continue to do that then we'll be able to make systemic change but you are I mean when we say we haven't heard from Are you feeling satisfied with what's happened so far with your demands? Oh, no. I think these conversations might need to pick up speed a little bit. Um, and again, they need to be transparent. I think they're taking advantage of the bureaucracy and the fact that so many organizations are submitting demands. But it is not, again, the most transparent process. Um, I don't know how to fix that again. I don't know how to be help them more accountable. But I'm definitely not satisfied with what we've received now. Again, we've gotten the meeting dates, but this isn't to say we've been in those conversations. Who's to say what they say when we get in those meetings, but I'm hopeful. You need to have a meeting with someone in power and say, these are our demands, which ones can you meet? What do you need to do now? Mm -hmm. Why can't you meet any other ones or whatever? Oh, no, yeah. But you uh, haven't had that since. Uh -uh. Okay. Oh, definitely. So, I mean, I definitely think in years past, our satellite campuses haven't received the attention or resources that they should have. Um, I think her name is Tracy Steeler. She's the director of multicultural affairs over at Blue Ash. And when we talk about supporting our students, I think it's necessary to include the entirety of our students. So this was kind of on behalf of their demands or their requests. Um, and moving forward, we've also included different student organizations from UC Blue Ash at the Black Roundtable just to see how we can be more um, a, a support. Are you feeling um, more momentum? Are you losing hope? Or do you, what are you feeling? It's a marathon, not a sprint, so you always have to be hopeful. Um, again, I am a senior, so I am excited for what this year has to bring despite the circumstances. Um, but no, yeah, you just got to keep pushing. Um, so I am excited for the conversations to come. Um, again, these been like the conversations we've had have put me in the mindset that these demands are more than feasible. Um, we've had the support of administrators, community partners. So 
I'm not too much of an optics guy. Um, unfortunately, the Black Roundtable doesn't have a social media, so we can't like publicize all of the demands that have been met. But as long as the change is happening, I think that's what people want. Um, yeah. Can you, when you send us a list of, when you send a list of the demands, can you tell me which ones have been met or which ones, like right next to it, I've met with this person or that person, that way I can know Whew. how many you discussed and have the actual facts in front of me. Alrighty. I think it'll be easier if I see it like that. Oh yeah, and I can let you know like all the community partners we've been working with, so as far as um, the CPS strong one, we wanted to take advantage of Pinto strategic direction. Um, we were working with community partners who have historically worked on issues such as implementing or giving our work, our youth work employment opportunities or something like that, um, such as the Urban League. Eddie Cohen, he's a new director. Um, he is very big on youth engagement. They just got like a big $1.5 million settlement or like donation from one of the board of trustees. So like we have these resources and I just think it's a collective, collaborative effort um, that hasn't existed because of the disconnect that's been existing for so long. Yeah, and they need to use those resources in the right way. I got a question if you could answer it, Courtney, as you have been doing before. Okay, yeah. Have you been in touch with other campuses in the Midwest or in the university system in Ohio? Um, and this year, recently, no, not so much. Again, we are focused more so on like internal domestic issues, if that makes sense. But there has always been an aspiration to have like an inter council between the black community. So I know that there's an inter university council with an administration, but if we can really amplify the voices of the issues happening within our own communities, um, within our state, I think that would really magnify what we're trying to do. Yeah. The question that I was hoping for was, is there can you compare similar campuses to UC? How's UC doing? Is it like worse than everybody else? About the same? A little bit better than some? That's the kind of communication I was wondering if you just had with other student bodies. Um, so there, again, there hasn't been much conversations with other student bodies, but just in comparison to other universities. So we look at the, the University of Minnesota um, and they're severing ties with their Minneapolis Police Department. I think you can't really equate that to the University of Cincinnati because you don't have those same um, issues as prevalent there as you do here. Um, you don't have those same systems as far as Cincinnati. We have an entire collaborative agreement dedicated to holding our police accountable. I'm not sure if you have those same systems um, present in Minnesota. So I think there are definitely various factors that you have to consider. Um, but UCPD and UC as a whole have so much further to go. Um, I can't speak to other campuses and their police departments, but I am not satisfied with our history and what we've done to address it. And I think there needs to be a lot more done. And I think addressing these demands on behalf of the Black Roundtable is just one step, the first step in getting that change. Do you think it's time for universities to get rid of the police department? I think that is a very interesting perspective. I definitely think radical reform is necessary. And when you consider what that reform looks like, it may look like uprooting what we currently see as the police. Um, but currently, that is all we've known. Um, unfortunately, those are the people that people rely on to come to us. Now, how we can implement community partners to help change that, I know that was one of student government's demands, asking our, our, our resident um, employees or something to that effect. And I do think there can be another system to address issues um, that don't require a police presence but change is gradual. So again, as we talk about how can we implement systems to hold them accountable, I think that's how we get to that gradual, radical upheaval. Right, yeah, because it, it is a big change right now for people's minds to even grasp, you know? No, yeah, defund the police. I wouldn't say it's recent, but like abolish ICE, people are saying that. And I mean like, yes, that's new, but what, what departments do you see holding that, like? department accountable like there needs to be somebody enforcing immigration laws and things of that nature that's a whole other yeah. tangent with shisha keisha when you talk about these new ideas such as abolishing things that have been so instilled within our society you got to think about all the factors 